Look, look at my sock, dude. Look at this fucking hole. Gotta toss these. Trash! What is going on, guys? It's Coming here. I know I haven't posted a video in a while, but we're coming out with new content for you guys all the time. A couple videos ago, I actually talked about Adidas and how I thought that they were dead. Let's just roll the little flashback here. It's definitely killing off Adidas. Yeah. Adidas, uh, mark my words, is dead today. Man, that got me to think, is Adidas actually dead? With that being said, today I want to compare Adidas' premier runner in the Ultra Boost and compare it to Nike's newest runner in the Epic React. So we're going to have an all-out war today. It's going to be the Reacts versus Boost. Let's get it. But before anything, make sure you guys drop a like, comment, subscribe, and share the video. It means a lot to me. Coming from y'all, I love y'all. Anyways, let's get started. I'm going to break down the shoes in three different categories. We're going to go price, style, and performance. And we're going to go from there, figure out which is better in each category. And, you know, hopefully determine a winner today. And hopefully, you know, you guys will agree with me. I don't really care. It's my opinion. Anyways, let me bring up the two shoes. I don't have a table today, so I'm just gonna hold them onto my lap. Uh, I'll actually hold them to the side here. So we do have the Nike Epic React Cookies and Cream, and we do have the Adidas Ultra Boost 3.0's Oreos. The first category that we're gonna look at today is price. Now, a lot of people give a shit about price and, you know, trying to find deals. That's why everybody goes to shop during sales. So I can tell you right now, the Epic Reacts, they retail at $150, while the Ultra Boost 3.0's and 4.0's or whatever, they usually retail around 180. Both models have upper upper models and lower models. The Reacts have like the Elements and the Turbos. Those are more expensive than the Reacts. And then the Ultra Boost have a bottom, like a lower tier model, which is the Pure Boost. And they also have the most iconic shoe today in the sneaker world. Yeezys, Yon Yon. Nobody gives a shit about Yeezys anymore. Nobody gives a shit about Yeezys anymore. What? But if we're looking at a specific price point, we gotta go with the Reacts. They are $30 cheaper at $150. Um, you can also find a multitude of colors at your local, I don't know, like finish line, foot locker, foot action, stuff like that. So in price, we gotta give it to the Nike Epic Reacts. So the next category that we're gonna take a look at today is style. Now I know style isn't the most important thing when it comes to a performance shoe, but I don't, I personally, I don't want my shoes to look like fucking dog shit while I'm running in them working out. So let's take a look at what the shoes are made up of. So let's take a look at the Nike Epic Reacts. These are a much sleeker shoe. As you can see, they're basically an entire sock fit. If you look at the collar of the shoe, it's much more elastic, so it stretches out. There's also no case to the shoe, so it doesn't add any more unnecessary bulk. Uh, Nike also put in a single layer of fly knit on the uppers, and in the midsole, they have the Reacts. Now, the only problem that I have with these shoes is the fact that the React midsole right here pops out like crazy. It looks like if you're trying to sit on a stool and you have a really big ass, it kind of just looks like your ass is drooping off the stool. So that's like something I don't like about it. Let's move on to the Ultra Boosts here. So the Ultra Boosts compared to the Reacts, in my opinion, are much more bulky. A lot of that could be attributed to the fact that it does have a cage and the heel cup is a little bit more bulky, adding a little bit more weight. But I personally like having the cage here. Um, I also like the way that the Prime Knit looks on the 3.0s over how the Fly Knits look on the Reacts. And then if you look at the midsoles here, we just have like the regular boost midsole. It doesn't stick out as much. Also have the Continental tire uh, outsoles here. Another thing you notice is they're not as elastic-y as the Epic React. So it's not so much of a stock fit. It's just more based around comfort. Me personally, if I had to go with the two in terms of style, which I like better, I've always been a fan of the Ultra Boost. I think they look a little better than the Reacts anyways. It's just a cage gets to me. I like the translucent, like plastic material. So the scoreboard is 1-1. It's a tie fucking game. Let's get it. The final category that we are going to look at today is performance. Now, performance is like the biggest thing in this review. I mean, it is a performance review. How I'm going to break this down for you guys, I'm actually just going to tell you a little story. And that should convey like, you know, which one I think is a better performance shoe. So I used to run a lot when I wasn't fat as fuck. You know, I'd run about three miles a day and I would have these two shoes with me. And I tried to experiment with them a little bit just to see which one the better runner was. The Epic Reacts for me... Um, I have a slightly wider foot, so getting my foot into these and keeping them there without hurting took a while. It took about an hour or two to break in, but after they broke in, they felt like a glove, felt amazing. The Ultra Boost, on the other hand, they slipped right in, felt like I was fucking a cloud, and you know, we just got into it. 
But as I started running, I noticed while wearing the Ultra Boost that the support and cushioning that it provides is good, but eventually uh, my ankles started hurting a little bit and because I'm flat footed, my shins would hurt after I long, run for a long period of time. And so with the Ultra Boost, I didn't get that like perfect amount of cushioning or stability. The Epic Reacts on the other hand, even though these are much more of a flimsy shoe, it definitely offered me a lot more cushioning and support than I needed. My shins did not hurt at all. And as you can see, I run in these a lot. I've beaten the shit out of these outsoles um, and part of the outsole even peels a little bit um, for me just running extensively in them. I mean, if we're looking at a pure performance shoe, one's gotta go. I'm sorry, man. I like the Ultra Boost more. Like, if you ask me what I thought was a better shoe, I'll go with the Ultra Boost, but performance, I gotta go with the Reacts. So for that reason alone, I gotta toss these. They are, you know, in the fucking trash can. Cash in the trash bin. Right there, that's the trash bin. I'm gonna go with the Nike Epic Reacts. These are 150, like I said earlier. Super affordable, super comfortable. If you have a wide foot, let it sit in for a little bit. Uh, they also offer like a lot of cushioning and support, like I said before. Um, so yeah, today's winner is the Nike Epic React. Even though I didn't think that this would be the better shoe, it's a better performance shoe. So we gotta go with that. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for watching my performance performance review on the Nike Epic Reacts and the Ultra Boost. Uh, I gotta go grab those Ultra Boosts because I actually really like those shoes and I can't let them just fucking die like that. Anyways, make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe to the video. I'll see you guys in the next video. See you later.